Children's Corner is a really nice suite Debussy wrote that consists of six short piano pieces. They're quite suitable for intermediate players, so I can really recommend it if you're not familiar with it. Number four is called The Snow is Dancing, and I got this as a request from my Patreon sponsor M. Carlin. And it's the hardest in the set, quite difficult to play actually, to get the snowflake 16th notes really even and balanced between the hands. But Debussy writes amazing intricate textures full of ideas that really summons a scene in a winter landscape where the snow is dancing. I'm just going to read a passage from my go-to author when it comes to Debussy and Ravel, Paul Roberts, in his book on Debussy's music. The Snow is Dancing is in many ways the most complex piece of the set, pianistically and emotionally. The preceding Serenade of the Doll presents problems of nimbleness and lightness of touch, but nothing quite to compare to the intricate ostinatos or the delicate textures of The Snow is Dancing. Within such a refined and small-scale frame, the mood, especially in the middle section, is as difficult to judge as are the touch, texture and dynamics. Debussy's art here, as in the following piece, The Little Shepherd, expresses elements of a child's psyche for which humor would quite miss the mark. So in general, in this kind of impressionistic music, there's a lot of coloring notes in the harmony that we keep in the pedal instead of separating it. And they start to dissolve the harmonic functions a bit. So it's more like playing with colors of harmony without a clear function and direction. So like texture is everything. So here the right hand kicks it off. And then the left hand enters. And we get this, it's just a unison, but we have this bouncing effect that's present through the whole piece. Uh, the left hand first. And harmonically, this is, the key signature is D minor, and this are, these notes are part of D minor. But Debussy is kind of keeping it open uh, to begin with, not committing to anything, because this could also be a, like A minor, or F major, uh, like the tonality. And then in the third bar, we get these whole notes in the left hand. That's exactly these kind of uh, shades of colors with different notes. So. So the B flat is one thing, and then the C is one thing, back to the B flat and the C sharp. So the C sharp is the leading note to D and after this it's going to D in the bass so it's committing here to D minor and here the left and right hand starts to diverge and here it really comes to life. So really cool music, I think, here. And keep the pianissimo. He writes più pianissimo, like even quieter, uh, because there's so much movement within the music itself. Uh, and you can um, impose some restraint here and just kind of sit back and let it speak for itself. I think that's more powerful here. Uh, so really cool when it's going. You can like really see the snow falling and, and the swirling in the air. And here we get a slight change of texture. Now we get this um, bouncing in another way, a ping pong. And it's a lot of hand logistics here and in this piece and this place in particular, like, because it's so crowded, but it's, um, it's meant to be played in this way. Like you can also, uh, you can play the nose in one hand just to know how the pattern goes. Like that's the musical pattern, but when we play it with both hands, you get a different feeling of it. And it's, it's interesting this way, like sometimes in Bach, should you play 
um, a statement of a subject in a fugue or something with one hand because you have to change hand. Something happens when you change hands. Uh, that's what I feel as a performer. Uh, when you play something and divide it with the hands, you can get much more legato and uh, and uh, coherent feeling if you play it in one hand. But sometimes that's not possible. And here it's like the opposite. He, Debussy writes it for two hands to create an effect of of um, uh, complexity. It's a kind of point of rest here with a B flat, some kind of B flat minor or diminished. Go again. And here is an amazing, surprising chord. So now there's a harmonic shift that we get this G flat minor, uh, G flat major, with the uh, coloring notes. So you see, I change here in the middle of this. Because before I, I want the uh, right, left hand on top and after I want the right hand on top. Also here the mezzo piano, this is a loud dynamic in the context. It's been piano and pianissimo before, so I, I mean you can uh, bring it out somewhat here I think. But still the diminuendo is going, it's going from a high place and, and diminuendo. And then again. It, so the block chord sequence going to C flat major and it's C flat major seven super nice point of rest again just keep the groove so here it changes the C flat to C natural, that's the only only change. C flat. And it's uh, pointing to another place harmonically. And also here we get a new type of marking. We So it's not the mezzo piano straight away. We get the swelling. So it, it's a nice um, organic feel to this. So the second time. Here's something new again. Guess what this is? It's the Debussy trademark whole tone, whole tone scale. I think it's one note we don't have here. Yeah, we don't have the B flat, but it's the whole tone scale. And do a twist. Uh, soft and kind of sad. This is uh, the momentum is starting to die away here, but there's a lot of uh, music to be played. But it's less and less things happening in the longer lines. Like echo. And now for an, another time. So it's uh, an answer, it looks like it's going to be the same way with the whole tone, but here it changes the harmony to a new color. This is much more of a major chord, like a B flat major 6, back to whole tone, back to major. And this is going to prepare the return of the first statements. So after this. This is what we, how it starts in the beginning. Now it's an octave lower and it gets even fuller, the register here. So this is also going straight into the kind of the middle section. And this is a new idea. So first off, the left hand gets to play both of these voices, the 16th notes bouncing by itself. And this is why this is a hard piece. It's not for um, beginner players at all. Super, because you need to, <laughs> much harder for the left hand. 
because you want to be able to play this when we have it in the right hand you can uh, form it as a melody the phrasing and and um, make it come to life you need to do that in the left hand too and so on anyway the right hand gets this uh, repeated note that really stands out something yeah, un peu en dehors, slightly uh, emphasized, brought out. And CD un peu is slowing down. So quite a lot of things happening in this place. So slower. And here, suddenly. Suddenly back in tempo of mouvement. And I think this is like a gust of wind suddenly it takes over and you're thrown to back to the, the tempo. And a new surprise. So this is a reharmonization of the melody. So first we have the this this contour, um, the D flat, B flat. This it's over a diminished or kind of B flat minor or diminished and then suddenly and so it's the same but it's it's a, a G flat seventh chord just a new place harmonically provides energy well of course as the sforzato adds to it But uh, immediately going down to the pianissimo and then insertion of a second idea of the middle section. Here it's the left hand that comes with the statement. It's kind of up to something here in the low register, kind of scheming. Just a super nice place. Uh, it's also a cool reharmonization. The right hand plays the same. Then when the left hand reaches the long note, this is a, gets to a diminished chord, and then this swelling as a response. And the second time, it reaches. So it's the same chord note diminished and then G flat major and then we get the uh, repeat of the first idea of the middle section the repeated note And here a big contrast, now a new idea and it's a complete textural idea basically. It's the same kind of bouncing but now it's on the same note. And here uh, staccato, you can I think uh, yeah, play this without pedal to, to make it stand out. It's quite fun. So this also grows back to the return of the main section with these really cool uh, textures. So it grows from this. And now these chromatic notes get really scrambled. So it starts to sound almost like a modern, super modern Ligeti etude for just a brief time. And I try to gradually add in the pedal to get back to the first textural idea uh, with the snow where it's tonal again. And also I do a ritardando to, to kind of mark it. This is the same for some time. 
uh, the point of rest here. takes a new direction here, we get some kind of falling diminished. The left hand has the diminished, but some coloring notes. Quite uh, bright colors, actually. Uh, but it, it lands on this tritone, like it's a uh, so it's not super dissonant in this context, but uh, it's not stable either. So it's something is left here. And it actually, actually resolves to an open fifth here, uh, the G flat. And we get an idea in the right hand that we had in the left hand below, now it's in the bright register. Then these are the kind of phrases that starts off the piece in the very beginning. You remember, now it's just an echo of that and with a super high, it's a chromatic oscillation. And now it gets more frequent. But it's kind of so high you can almost not discern it. At least I, I, th I feel that. Like, how many notes are there if you don't uh, listen clearly to it? And, and then... It's just an open fifth left in the left hand. And sans ralentir is without ritardando uh, or, or without slowing down. So that's, it's an important point that you shouldn't make this like a an elegant, uh, organic closure of the piece. I it's more like the elements, the snow and, and the winter, they're just there and they're just going to continue and it gets farther and farther out of our sight some, some way. But uh, it should be slightly mechanical almost. So thanks so much for watching Sonata Secrets and I'll see you in the next video.